So the process of 3D printing is broken down into four steps. Uh, the first one is going to be the biggest, it's the one that's going to take the longest, it's going to be the hardest, and that is the design step. And you're basically going to create a 3D model on a computer. And it can be kind of time consuming and kind of daunting, but there are some great places to start. Um, the one place that we always suggest starting at is a website called Tinkercad.com. So if you guys want to write that down, Tinkercad.com is a great place to begin. And I'm gonna send you an email afterwards too that's got a link to it that you guys can see it. But it's based in a web browser. So do you guys have Chromebooks? No. No? Well, well on any Windows or Mac computer um, will work. So you can use it on any laptop, uh, even a Linux machine will run it. So it's a great place to start. Uh, the second one is Onshape. So Onshape also works in a, uh, a web browser, so you don't have to install anything. It works straight from scratch. But if you guys have iPads, um, do, you, do you, guys, you all have access to iPads? Yes. Okay, awesome. So Onshape has an iPad app. So if you want to design on an iPad, you can with Onshape. Um, but it's kind of difficult to design on an iPad, to be perfectly honest. It's not the best way to CAD design because it's kind of hard to kind of spin the model around and, kind of, and look at it. But if you want to design like that and your, your students want to dive into it and they're really interested in it, then go for it. Um, and Onshape is free as well. So. Those are the two places to start. Normally, we always suggest starting with Tinkercad because you can kind of figure out how to manipulate those three shapes and kind of move them around. And you can combine things and create holes and things and stuff like that, and that helps. Uh, the the Onshape is more like a traditional CAD program where you're actually going to draw things in 2D and then extrude them out to pull them out. So it can be a little bit more difficult to kind of get used to. Um, and that's why it helps to kind of have a familiarity with Tinkercad before you move into Onshape. The third one I would suggest is Fusion 360. So we don't recommend that for students um, uh, that are in middle school, elementary school, because it can be really, really daunting. But for junior high and high school, it's awesome. Um, and it's a little bit more advanced, so it definitely takes some getting used to all the controls and kind of seeing how all of them work. Um, but it's a great place to start, and it's totally free for schools. You can go and download um, Fusion 360 or Autodesk Inventor. Um, anything that's that's made by Autodesk is great. And, and Tinkercad is also made by Autodesk, so the, the controls from Tinkercad, you'll be able to easily translate into the controls for Fusion 360. So have, have any of y'all ever made anything like in a CAD design program before or designed something in 3D? Yeah. 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 Awesome. On what program? Tinkercad. On Tinkercad? Okay, great. Yeah. So then you guys know all about it. Have you uh, have you used like exported? Have you ever exported for 3D printing? No. You able to see how that works? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So uh, yeah, you can just download anything as long as it is a .stl or .obj file. It'll work with a 3D printer because it has to be in those type of files because those are the 3D type of files that the printer itself can read. So once you have that 3D file, then you're going to take that file and put it into Cura. And Cura is the slicing program that's basically going to convert that into a 3D printable language. And that language is called G-Code. So how's it going with uh, Cura installing? Do you have it installed yet? Well, yes, I'm going through the points where it's asking for certain quality, fill, speed, and temperature support, and so forth. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll walk you through all that. We're gonna we're gonna cover every step of that in the training. So if you get to the point where it says like add new printer wizard, have you gotten to that yet? No. No. No, you haven't. Okay. Well then, um, well I'll go ahead and share my screen with you, and I'll help you get to that, so you can see where it is. So let me open up Kira here, and then share my screen. So if you click where it says machine and then add new machine. I'm still on the file. To, okay, machine at the middle. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then add new machine. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then if you click add new machine, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we click other for the machine type. Yep, I remember reading that. I'm good. Because both of these are going to be other. So we'll click other right here. Yep. And, and then... then are you there? Yes, Mendel comes next. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so we'll click Mendel. And then once we click Mendel, then we're gonna actually click finish, and then we'll be ready to 3D print. Okay. So 
what we need to do is we have to set our parameters before the printer is going to be able to code correctly. So Mendel is the operating G code that it's going to use, but we have to tell it first uh, all of the settings to make sure that they're all set up correctly. So there's going to be two different ones that you'll do. You'll have one set of settings for the A5 and another one for the A31 that Josh is building right now. So you'll have each one of those. Uh, to be able to go from and what we always recommend is using like two different computers and it helps a lot to have like one computer for the a5 and another computer for the a31 so then you can uh, easily know that if you're on this computer then this is going to be the computer for this printer and if you want to use them both in the same you can you can switch back and forth between machines but it helps a lot to start off having two separate ones so um, do you your students have logins where they have separate logins when they log into computers to Tinkercad, yes. Well, for their for the like for Windows, do they does each no. student have their own login for Windows? No. No. Okay. Awesome. So when you get set up, then um, that profile will remember all the settings that you have, and it's profile specific. That's why I was asking. So like, if you log in as an administrator or a teacher logs in, it won't remember all these settings. But if you have it uh, set up here, then it's going to remember them all. So. You can go ahead and follow along and put all these in. And we're going to first put all the ones that we need for the A5, and then we'll put all the ones that we need for the A31. So we're going to start with the A5, though. And the settings here on the side are going to be really similar and, uh, to the A31 with just a couple of minor changes. So the first one is the layer height. So that is how tall each one of the layers that's laying it down is. So as it's laying down layer by layer by layer by layer, it's going to form the three-dimensional model. And the, that layer height is how close those are together. So if it's at 0 0.1, it's going to be a higher quality print because they're closer together. And that's about a width of a human hair. And at 0 0.3, it's going to be, excuse me, farther apart. So that's going to print a lot faster, but it's not going to look as good. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at 0 0.2 for now on my computer. But if you want to put it at 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, uh, feel free to. Uh, and the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the shell thickness. So the shell thickness is the thickest uh, part of the outside of the model itself. So if you're looking at the model, that's kind of like the wall of your structure. So the shell, as it's going around, you can change the thickness of the shell to actually give you a harder model, just like a turtle shell would get thicker if the turtle shell was bigger. So that's what we're setting right now. But we have to make sure that that is actually a multiple of our nozzle size. So to be a multiple of the nozzle size, we're going to make this 0 0.8. And it's going to turn yellow because the nozzle size is actually 0 0.4. I just, I'll grab it. Yeah, I'll grab it. Thanks, man. Can you give me that? Can I have that back? So once you have that 0 0.4, thank you. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go ahead and change the bottom and top thickness to 0 0.8 as well. So they always correspond to about the same thing. And the bottom and top thickness is the thickest part of the bottom or the top of your model. So you can adjust those and kind of mess around if you want. You can see it's going to give you a little paragraph that explains about what it is. But for now, we can just leave them the same as the shell thickness, and that'll give you a reliable print. The next one is the fill density. So that's how dense the inside of our model is. So inside of each one of the models is actually a crosshatch pattern that will fill in if it needs to be solid. So it's going to fill in that inside uh, by basically moving around to fill in the gap. So you don't have to design a model that's going to be hollow to print hollow. You can actually make it, uh, you don't have to make it solid either because it will. you can tell it to be hollow or solid right here with the fill density. So we always recommend be, being between 5 and 20% on the fill density. If you want to have something hollow, though, then that would obviously be what? Zero. Zero, yeah, exactly. And then solid would be 100. So with the print speed, that's the next thing we're going to talk about. That's how quickly the printer is actually going to print. And with material extrusion printing, the 50 millimeters a second is about as fast as they can reliably print. So that's always what we recommend. If you have your printer tuned perfectly, you might be able to print faster than that. But we don't really recommend it because we like to err on the side of reliability versus actually speed. 
Um, you can uh, slow it down though and give it a lot higher quality. So if you wanted to go down to like 30 millimeters a second and then change your layer height to 0 0.1, that would be a really high quality print. So that's about the highest quality that these printers uh, can print um, by changing that speed to, to be slower because then it's not going to be sticking the layers down as quickly so it's going to give them more time to melt together and diffuse together. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change our printing temperature to 220 degrees Celsius. And the reason that we print at 220 is to give it enough time for the filament itself to melt. And if it's at like 210 or 200 degrees, it might not be hot enough for the filament to fully melt, and that can cause clogs and can cause issues. And this type of material actually has a special uh, like secret sauce, if you will, that's inside of it to make it a little more flexible and not as brittle as regular PLA, which is why it melts at a little bit higher temperature. So the bed temperature on this one is going to be zero. Now on the A31, that's going to be different, but for this one, it's going to be zero. And then the support type, we're going to go ahead and click everywhere. So it will automatically generate supports if you need it. Um, so if you put a model on there where it has an overhang, like a door frame or something like this, and it's sticking straight across, it will actually fall down and droop and turn into like a giant pile of spaghetti um, instead of printing straight across. So that's something to keep in mind while you're printing is to make sure that, uh, that the model itself is supported if it needs support. The next is the platform adhesion type. And that is if you're having problems with stuff sticking, you can actually turn the brim on. And brim will act as suction cups uh, around the edge of your model to help it if it starts to warp up or something like that. If you have a fan that's aimed at your printer or something, that can also cause it to warp and to cool at inconsistent temperatures. So what we want to do is turn the brim on to help like larger flat things stick to the build surface easier. So you can turn that on if you want or you can leave it off. And then the last thing we're going to change is the diameter of the filament. And that's 1.75. And you'll see that is written right here. So then now we're going to set our build size. So to set our build size, we're going to click on machine. And then we're going to go to machine settings. <laughs> Where do you get build size at? You're, you're going to click machine and then machine settings right here. Okay. Gotcha. And then we're going to change our width, depth, and height. And what we're going to change that to is we're going to change it to 150 100. by 125. Whoop, I told you wrong. 125, I'm sorry, by 150, by 100. Just like that. What's the third one? 100. The height is also 100. The height is 100, yes, ma'am. Okay. And then we're going to uncheck this heated bed right here. Because we don't have a heated bed on the NWA 3DA5. Okay. So then now we can also name the machine if you'd like to na name it. So you can click change machine name and name it whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to name it the NWA 3D A5, but you can name it something else if you want. So then if you add the A31 onto this, then you'll be able to switch back and forth between them and you'll be able to, uh, to pick the machine name. And on mine, on Mac, sometimes it puts them behind it when I click on it. So you just click OK and it'll, it'll come back. We're good. All right, so this is all set now for the A5. So if you want to install it on another computer or if you want to install it on the same one, we can walk through the A31 settings. So do you want to install that on the same computer or would you like to put it on a different one? Well, I got it on a different one and I'm already close, ready to go for the machine settings. Okay, great. So on that one, you can also pick other and then you can pick uh, the machine type is going to be Mendel, just like before. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll add it for you too so we can see it. So we'll click other and then we'll click Mendel. There you go. I'm ready for the layer height. So this is going to be the exact same settings on the side except 
you're going to set the bed temperature to 50. So the layer height is going to be 0 0.2. The shell thickness is going to be 0 0.8 again. The bottom and top thickness is going to be 0 0.8. Okay. Punching temperature is going to be 220. The support type is going to be everywhere. And the diameter is going to be 1.75. And the nozzle size is going to be 0.4, just like that. Okay, 1.25 is diameter? 1.75. It says right here on the filament. Is that the nozzle size? What's 0. it say? 0.4. 0.4. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good. So then now that that's set, we're going to go ahead and click machine and then back to machine settings. And we're going to set the full size of the A31. And that's 300 by 300 by 400. So just like that. And these screenshots are actually on your SD card. So if you ever want to go back and reference these to see what they need to be set at, you can open up your SD card and inside the Cura folder, you'll find the screenshot of this. Got it. Okay. And then you could also change the machine name if you like. And I will name this one the A31, NWA3DA31. Okay, let me verify real quick. Layer height 0.2, shell thickness 0.8, bottom top thickness 0.8, print speed 50, temp 220, support type everywhere, diameter 1.75, max width 300, depth 300, height 400. Do you have your bed temperature set to 50? Where's bed temperature? Oh, no. No. Okay, did you uncheck the bed? The bed temperature has to be checked for the A31. So that's why we want to leave that one alone. So go ahead and go back to machine settings. Yeah, I'm there. And then check this box that says heated bed. So that stays checked. It is. It is. And then we'll change this bed temperature right here to 50. Okay, on the left side. Got it. Okay. You got it? Okay, okay. awesome. So once you have your... Uh, your settings set, then you'll load a model into Cura. So this is going to be the same whether you're loading it for the A5 or the A31. And I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the A5. So if you put it on uh, the same computer, you can click machine. And then when you click A5, you'll be able to switch back to the NWA 3D A5. So now it's switched and you can see that the, the size of the build area is smaller for the A5 because it prints this big, six by five by four inches. So now we're ready to load a model in here. So if you download a model from Tinkercad, this is where you would load that model in there. And this is that second step, that slicing step. So you click load, and then you'll load your model into the build surface. So we'll go ahead and click on the, uh, the let me go ahead and go to my SD cards. Whoops, wrong one, there we go. And then inside of your SD card, you'll be able to find your STL files, so .stl. And those are some already pre-made files that will be in there that you can find. So if you want to just navigate to your SD card, then you can click on those files and then open it up. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the keychain. And you probably already have a robot that's on your, your surface anyway for um, the beginning of Cura. It kind of gives you a model to start with. And you can add as many models as you like. By clicking and moving these around, as long as they're yellow, you can add as many models to the build area as you want. So for like the A31, you can print a whole bunch of models on there. You can print five or six or 10 even on the A31 because the build surface is a lot larger. So once you have the models on here how you like, you can actually rotate the models by clicking rotate and rotate them side to side. You can actually click scale and you can scale the models and scale them larger or smaller. And you can move them around where you want to. You can even rotate them to be at an angle if you'd like. But you want to make sure that it has the most flat surfaces possible that you're printing with. And you can actually see but the layers by clicking view mode and then going to layers. You can actually see what the support structure is doing. So you can see what each individual layer is going to print. And you can see this turquoise is a support structure. So when I move down the layers from 173 down, you can see what each layer is going to print. So you can see here's the crosshatch pattern that it's going to develop inside of your model, and that is that infill density. So if I change this infill density to something like maybe 
then it'd be a really solid model. And you'll see that the inside of this, as it loads, will increase that crosshatch pattern, and that will make it a lot stronger to be able to print. So you can see now, like the crosshatch pattern is really close together. So if you want to click view mode and then go back to normal, you can kind of just explore with those different things. And there's lots of awesome stuff that Cura does, but this is kind of the basics of it. But you can dig around, and we encourage you to dig around and do some really cool stuff. So once you have your model ready to print, then the third step is where you're going to transfer it to the printer itself. So you can either use the models that you have on the SD card, or you can use the SD card models that are already on there. But if you want to save the models that you have in Cura, you can save them to the SD card. So go ahead and just get like the SD card adapter or the USB adapter. And if your SD card's plugged in, it might say SD right here. And if it doesn't, you can click Save Toolpath and then navigate to where your SD card is. But if your SD card's in, it probably says SD right here. You can also right click and save it wherever you want. So you can save it in a folder or save it to another file type. So if you want to have different folders or different classes, then you totally can. But if you just click SD, it will automatically save whatever the STL file type is to the SD card. So if I just click SD right now, it'll just save it as keychain. But I have a keychain and a dice, so I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to click Save G, uh, G Code, and then I'm gonna just going to go ahead and name it like both. So I'll say keychain and dice. So we have it both on there. And then we'll make sure it's on the SD card itself to make sure it saves on there. <laughs> and then when we click save, it'll save to it. And then now we want to eject it. And on my computer, uh, since it's a, it's a Mac, I have to click eject right here. But you can eject yours, safely remove hardware from the dock, and then eject it. And then you'll take your SD card, and this is going to transfer to the front of the printer. So on the A5, it's going to be right here on the front. And on the A31, I'll show you what that is in a, sec in a second on the side of the box. Just as the screen. And then you just push this in there until it clicks. And then that is that third step, that transfer step, where you're transferring the file from your computer to the printer itself. And then the fourth step is as simple as just hitting print on the printer. And you'll select your print in the same way on both screens to be able to print with it. So what we want to do first is make sure that our filament is all loaded and our bill plate's all level and everything is all set up like it needs to be with the machine integrity so we know that we'll be able to have a successful print. But if our printer was all ready to go, then you could literally just plug it in and hit print and it would print and the robot would work and that's it. So those are the four big steps of 3D printing. So of 3D printing, it's going to be first, you're going to create a file. That's going to what's take the longest to be able to design that 3D file. And then once you design that, it'll be a .stl or obj that you will slice in Cura. And that's that second step, that coding step. And then once it's sliced into a G-code file, then you're going to transfer that to the printer. So that's the third step, where you save it to the SD card. And then once you have it saved to the SD card, then that fourth step, you're actually going to hit print on the printer itself. So do you all have any questions about those four steps and what they look like? Still trying to figure stuff out. That part I know. Do you have any questions? Um, as far as questions are concerned, there's seven, seven million. Um, <laughs> well, about, the, about like those four steps. Does that make sense, those four steps of the process of 3D printing? Sure. OK. I mean, is it something that, that you need help with that you, you'd like me to explain better? Or does that make sense that it's going to flow from a computer to the 3D printer? Basically, the kids will help me. OK, great. So uh, those four steps are going to encapsulate like every single time you're going to 3D print. You're going to design something, and then slice it, and then get it to the printer, and then hit print. Um, but there's some troubleshooting things that are going to arise as well. And it looks like I lost your feed. Is your guy's camera plugged in? I can't see you guys anymore. Well, it shouldn't be. I'm still here, but I, I'm I seeing a blank a little box too, just like you are. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I can't see you anymore. Oh, interesting. You want to maybe just like unplug it and plug it back there, in? There. there we go. Better now? I just yeah. moved the screen. All right. So. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to check uh, the printers to make sure that they have good machine integrity. And that's the first troubleshooting thing that we want to check. So we want to check that because they just got shipped and because you just built the A31. So we're going to go over some stuff to make sure that it's all set um, like it needs to be. 
Um, you guys froze up. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. Okay. I'm just checking and making sure that, um, that the audio didn't freeze as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to check the printer to make sure that nothing's broken on it and to make sure that it's built correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to look and make sure that the plate moves back and forth by moving it, and this moves back and forth. This is the extruder assembly, and that these belts are tight, so just kind of glance at them, and make sure that this doesn't look broken or bent, this idler pulley or this one, and make sure it doesn't look uh, cracked or anything on the bottom or like it's broken. Basically to make sure that it, the machine itself looks all right. Because if it starts making sounds like a dying transformer, like or moving around or something, then something is not correct on it. Something's probably unplugged, more than likely. And if it's making those kind of noises, if, if it's not broken, it's probably unplugged, are these plugs right here to go to each one of the motors. So there's the X motor, there's the Z motor that goes up and down, the Y motor, and then the E motor. And E is for extruder. And those four motors, and then these little end stop switches that mean zero, you want to make sure that all of those are plugged in. So go ahead and check on the A5 to make sure that all of those are plugged in on it. So does everything look plugged in and good on the A5? Well, we think so. We honestly didn't touch it at all. We had been working so hard to get the A31 put together. We tried to make sure it was somewhat ready, but sure. we haven't touched the A5, to be honest. Well, that's totally fine. It comes ready to go right out of the box. So you should be able to just pull it out and check and make sure that everything's plugged in and nothing looks broken. Kids say it looks fine. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So then now I'll go ahead and pick up the A31 here. Okay. Oh, I and we're going to check this one. So this one's going to be a little bit different because we want to make sure that everything is plugged into the correct places since you guys plugged them in. So uh, first, what we want to do is we want to make sure that these are plugged in in the back. Yeah. Yes, so they are. There's one eight pin and one four pin, right? Yep, exactly. Okay. And then we're also going to make sure that this right here is pushed to 110 volts. So you should, when you look in here, see 110. Yep, we did that. You did? Okay, awesome. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to check these over here. So this is the Z. So we want to make sure that your T brace right here on the Z axis is attached and it doesn't move at all. And that this little switch right here is plugged into the one that says Z. And then the one that says Z is also plugged into this motor right here because that's the Z motor. That's the one that goes up and down. So Z is the layering up and down. Yeah, we're good on that one. So those plugged in? Okay, awesome. So then you want to make sure that Y is plugged in back here. So this small switch is Y, and then this motor is the Y motor. So you want to make sure that the Ys are both plugged into that. We're good. Is it good? Okay, awesome. So then this is E. This is the extruder motor right there. So that one should say E. Is that one all right? He's checking. Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. And then these will be X. This motor and then this switch that's right here. These are the X switches. Yeah, we're good. Those are X? Okay, great. So that means that everything got plugged in right. Woohoo! Good job, guys. So now we want to move this side to side to make sure that the belt is tight on this and on the build surface. So make sure that when we're moving it, the belt's tight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay, awesome. So now. We're gonna make sure that this doesn't rock back and forth. It should fit into the grooves and not rock back and forth. It should slide back and forth, but not rock like this at all. Yeah. We're good. Yeah? Okay, great. And then now grab onto the corner of the build plate right here, and then try to rock it side to side. Because if it does this, then that means we're gonna to have to tighten it. It should only move forward and back. Yeah, I worked on that for about 45 minutes one day, so yeah. Okay, great. So you'll, you'll put your flex plate and you'll snap that to the top of the glass plate and then attach those to the metal plate using these clips right here to be able to clip them all together. So it should say NWA3D right here on the top and that's your lock build print surface. So you guys have that on there? Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay, great. So it sounds like the machine integrity is good on both of these, which is fantastic. So the second thing that we're going to talk about is making sure that your Cura settings are correct. So that's the second big troubleshooting thing to check on. So if something goes wrong, first make sure that the printer itself looks like everything's running right. 
And the second thing is to check those Cura settings and make sure when you look at your Cura settings, that they're not um, for the wrong type of printer or that if you're trying to print something on the different printers, that's going to probably be a common issue that you could have, which is why we recommend having it on different uh, computers. Because if you try to print something from the, uh, the A5 on this one, then it's actually not going to, uh, then this is going to print great. So it's going to print right here in the corner. So it's not going to print over here, but it's going to print over here in the corner because this is the area of the A5. But if you try to print something from the A31 onto the A5, then you're going to have a problem because it's going to try to heat the bed up and it's going to say uh, bed temp error, or it's going to try to move to the side and go to a bigger area than the build surface on the A5 can actually print. So you want to be careful to make sure that you don't slice the models for the different printers while you're printing them on there. So that's the second big thing, is to make sure that all those Cura settings are correct. So the third thing that we're going to go over is making sure that the build plates themselves are level. And this is going to be a little time consuming, because we want to make sure that the height of the nozzle is high enough off of the uh, build surface itself for the filament to stick to it. So imagine it is like toothpaste on a toothbrush. So if you're holding your toothpaste up in the air and you squeeze it, it's going to go all over the bathroom, and nothing, nothing's going to stick on your toothbrush. It's not going to get close to it at all. But if you have it too close and you, and you try to squeeze it, it's going to like push the bristles out of the way, and not much toothpaste is going to come out. Well, that's the same thing with a 3D printer. If the nozzle is too high from the build plate, it's going to turn into a giant pile of spaghetti. But if it's too close, it's going to either dig into the build plate or dig into the model itself. So you're looking for that happy medium, just like if you were putting toothpaste on a toothbrush. So that happy medium is two tenths of a millimeter. And the easiest way to measure that is a folded sheet of paper. So if you get a piece of printer paper and then fold it in half, that's what we're gonna use to test all of the heights. So we're first gonna do the A5, and then we're gonna do the A31, because they're similar, they're just a little bit different. So go ahead and grab a piece of paper and the A5, and then plug the A5 in. While we're plugging this in, um, the A31, we've done trying to get it level and had plenty of issues. Well, that's what I'm going to walk you through right now, so we'll get you going. It's tough to figure out how to level it, so that's why I'm here to help with you right now. Like I said, we haven't even touched this A5, so I don't even know where to plug it in at. That's fine. It plugs right in right on the side. Right here. Which side? <laughs> Under here. Oh, here. Okay. 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 So once you have it plugged in, do you guys have it plugged in? Mm, just Let about. Just about. Just about. Okay. Is there a spot? No. Oh. Okay. Let's put it over there then, I guess. That's the only thing we can do. Walk across the room. Okay. Flutter in. Right here in the table, it's fine. Okay. It's plugged in. Okay, great. So, with your folded sheet of paper, what we're going to do is we need to home the build plate. And what that means is it's going to move all the motors to zero. So we're going to go ahead and tap the button. And then we're going to go to setup. And then we're going to go to where it says auto home. And that's going to move to zero. And if it makes any loud noises or anything like that, they go ahead and unplug it. Because that means it's not uh, running correctly. And we're going to have to check out and see why it's making noises. And normally, if it makes noises, that means something is unplugged. So when it stops moving, let me know. Because it's going to move all the way down to zero. It's going. Do we need to have filament in it at this point? No? Nope. Okay. Nope, we're not. To, we'll get to that step in a little bit.
Okay, I think it's down. Okay, great. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, as soon as it stops moving, we're gonna tap this button, and then we're gonna go to setup, and then we're gonna go to disable motors. And that's gonna allow us to move the motors around while we're leveling the build plate. If you don't do that, they're gonna be locked in place. So you should be able to move these freely around. Yeah. So go ahead and move this, the nozzle gantry, over here to this corner of the build plate right here, and kind of pull the build plate out so it's in the corner like this. Does yours look like that? Because your uh, your camera's frozen, so I'm not sure if it has or not. No, we're good. Okay. And then now go ahead and take your piece of paper, and I'm going to be picking this up to show you the different views of it, but it's really important that you keep yours flat on the table, because if you lift it up and down, it'll give you an inaccurate reading, because it'll move the z-axis up and down, and we don't want to do that at all. What we're doing is we're going to adjust the build plate to make it level with the z-axis. So it's gonna we're making the machine level with itself. So I'm going to be picking mine up, but you want to leave yours flat on the table. Okay. So what we're going to do is you're going to take the piece of paper and slide it between the nozzle and the build surface. And if it doesn't fit in there, then go ahead and squeeze this together like that. And then you can fit the paper in between it. So the paper will be between the nozzle and your build plate, just like that. You can squeeze it and put it in there a little bit more too. So it'll be the nozzle, the paper, your build surface, and then this knob right here that the spring's on. Yeah, and it's tight. That's totally fine. Okay. So do you have it in there? Yes. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna be able to move the piece of paper just a little bit. Not too much because too far away it's gonna turn into pile spaghetti because it won't be able to stick to the build service. So what we're gonna do is by very small increments we're gonna adjust this one right here. So we're gonna move this about an eighth of a turn and if it's too tight, then what we're gonna do is we need to actually loosen this on the bottom to make it tighter on top. So it's kind of counterintuitive on what you're gonna be working on. So to make it looser up here, we're gonna tighten this on the bottom. So to tighten it, you're actually gonna turn this counterclockwise. So when you turn it about a fourth of a turn counterclockwise, you should be able to move this on top. And then when you turn it clockwise, it's gonna go up. So count down and clock up when you're moving it. So how loose is the friction that you want? So you want to have it to where it barely moves. You basically want to feel the vibration on the paper as it's barely moving. So imagine if you set your finger on the piece of paper and then you're moving that piece of paper on your finger, that's how close you want it to be because it, it has to be very close because this is the only thickness that you want are these two, this, uh, this piece of paper, the two tenths of a millimeter. Okay, we got it. So you can adjust this by small increments like a fourth of a turn or an eighth of a turn until you can move it and you feel the paper like vibrating underneath it. It's dragging pretty hard. Okay. But not so much that it buckles. So if it buckles and gets stuck, then it's too close. So that's why it's kind of a happy medium and, it, and it, you get used to, to leveling it. I got it. And the next one you're gonna do is you're just gonna move this whole build plate over and do the same thing for this one. So we're gonna adjust this now and see mine's a little bit close. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this a little bit counterclockwise and then test it. So I need to go a little bit more. So maybe a fourth of a turn more. So the key is really small increments until you feel about the same amount of tension on the back as you do on the front. So about that same amount of tension. So real small increments. And if you go too far, then you can go back and go clockwise a little bit and test it and go back a little bit until you get it right where you want to, which is the same amount of resistance that you have on the front as you have right here. Because you want it to be level all the way across. Y'all get it? Yes. Okay, great. So then now we're gonna do the inside right here. So this one's a little bit more tricky to get to. So you'll push this all the way over to the middle, and then you might not be able to move it very well or be able to pull to get fit under here to get to this right here, because it's kind of tough to get to. So I like to pull this whole bed out and then adjust it a little bit. So turn mine a little bit counterclockwise and then push it back and then adjust it. Still a little bit too close. So pull it out then adjust it a little bit, and then push it back. And if it's too close, you can push down to fit it underneath there. Sometimes it helps have the crease going the same way as your nozzle until it moves underneath there. And you want it to feel the same amount of tension there as you felt on the other sides. So then you'll move that one again. So I'll go ahead and move that a little bit more. 
and then move it back until you feel the same amount of tension on there. There we go. Maybe just a tiny bit more as we have on the outside edge. So it's still frozen, so I can't tell if you guys got it? No. Okay. So the trick is really small increments, and then to do one of them at a time. It's just a Okay. He said he was recording. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he said he would send the screenshots. Counterclockwise makes it go up, right? Uh, yes. That what that's gonna do is that. When you're when you're twisting it around, if you're trying to go up with the spring, it's different if you're trying to go up with the board. So if you're going clockwise, it's going to push the bill plate up, and if you go counterclockwise, it's going to pull the bill plate down. Okay, we've got it, I think, but it's, so it's counterintuitive to what you would think. It's a lot less friction when it's in the far y-axis position than it is in the middle of the plate. What do you what do you mean by y axis position? Are you, are you, do you mean the the nuts on the bottom here? Is that no. what you mean by y axis? No. When this, this, whole, this whole drill plate is y axis. This whole thing is y axis. So this is the y that moves back and forth. And when I'm at the very back of it, there's different friction than when I'm in the middle of it. Okay. So that's, that's the tricky part that we're going to try to work on. So go ahead, and what we're going to do is move it to above each one of these wing nuts, because that's what we want to, to do it. So these little knobs right here, that's what we want to adjust first. And then we can fine tune it later. But we first want to have it adjusted above each one of the wing nuts to where when we move the nozzle above one of these, one of these knobs, then it's the same amount of tension above each one of the three nozzles. All right. So that's what we want to focus on first. So you have it about the same amount? It doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty close. I think so. OK, awesome. So go ahead and pull the piece of paper out. And then now we're going to go ahead and look at the A31. So you can unplug this. We'll unplug the A5, because we always want to have it unplugged if we're not using it. You don't have to shut it down. Don't have to depress the button and shut anything down on the A5 before you unplug it? No, just unplug it. Okie dokie. Totally fine. There is no on off switch. You just unplug it. All right, we're ready for the A31, I think. So the A31 is going to be really similar, only it has four knobs instead of three because the build surface is a lot larger so we'll do the same thing we'll tap this and then we'll say setup and then we'll say auto home and then this is going to zero itself out yeah it's going to move to the end and move to zero and then when it stops moving we're going to disable the motors just like we do before We worked on this for like two hours one day, thinking that the middle had to be exactly the same friction as each corner, and it was not working, and we were getting little divots in the build surface. And mm -hmm. That was pretty good, too. I think I've got I think we're okay now. Yeah, I've got a little bit up. Yeah, well, I'm sorry to hear that you guys are having trouble. That's why we have these trainings, to walk you guys through, like, step by step and everything. So, um we can, we can walk through all those stuff and kind of go over any problems that you had, too, and we can kind of talk about what might have happened. Like, why, what was it creating the divots in? Like, was it heated while you were moving it around? 
Yeah, because we thought we should follow the instructions to the letter and turn it on to warm up the filament just to the point where it was going to be leaving the tiny amounts. We were looking at where, where if it leaves skips or if it doesn't leave skips with the filament. We didn't extrude anything, but, but we could never get it level. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess we're just not worrying about the middle of the plate. We're worrying about the four corners. Yeah, the, if you get the four corners set, then the middle of the plate will will help itself. It'll it'll level itself. Okay. So that's why it helps to go to the four corners around the edges. Okay. Yep. So that's what we're gonna do. And when we get start printing, then we'll talk a little bit more about like hot leveling and stuff like that. But right now, we're gonna focus on getting it level right above each one of the knobs. Okay. Just FYI, um, there's several teachers in here, and we're going to all have fac or conferences at five o'clock. So we got about three more minutes for today. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So leveling on this one is really simple. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to go above each one of these wing nuts, and you're going to level it with the folded sheet of paper until it feels about the same as the other one. So uh, there are students in there too. Can, are the students going to be able to stay in there? Yeah. I think so. And. We've got it now where the four corners are fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, well then, the, if you have the four corners with the folded sheet of paper and you've, and you've uh, Yes. It's, it's moving to where you, you feel a, quite a bit amount of tension when you're moving it around? Yeah, he was working on it while I was working on the A5. Okay, great. So then to load filament, we're gonna use what's called preheat PLA. So that's when you tap on the button and you'll go to setup and then preheat PLA. Now when you unload filament, you're gonna do preheat soft pull. And what that does is it pulls the filament when out when it's only at 100 degrees. So when you're pulling it out at 100 degrees, you're actually gonna pull out all the gunk and stuff like that that's inside of it because you can't pull it out when, it's, when the nozzle is cold. You have to heat it up to at least 100 to remove the filament. So you don't ever have to preheat when you're ready to print or anything else like that, only when you're loading and unloading filament. And the biggest thing that uh, I'm gonna tell you guys because I know I know you guys are about to go to conference, is always just have them unplugged and off when they're not being used. Because if it's ever heated up and there's filament loaded in it and it stays heated, the filament's gonna bake inside of that nozzle and it's gonna absolutely cause a clog. So you wanna make sure that if you're not using it, it's always unplugged and off. But if it's printing, it can print, this one right here can print for like 400 hours straight. And if you can print something on this one, probably the longest that it would take to print on this is probably like 150 hours or so, it's fine. Then you can print for that long because uh, as you're printing, it's actually going to be moving all that filament out and stuff, so it's totally cool. You just want to make sure that it's not on and not printing and heated. So just always have it unplugged and off when you're not using it. And otherwise, what we're going to do with the rest of the training when you guys uh, when you guys take off with the students that can stay here, though, is we're going to go ahead and load the filament, and then we're just going to hit print. And to do that, you'll just tap the button, and then from the button, you'll just go to print from SD, and if the SD card is in there, then you'll be able to pick your print. But first we have to make sure we load the filament. So that's what we're gonna do when you guys uh, take off is we're gonna load the filament and uh, then hit print. So to load the filament on both of them, go ahead and press setup and then press preheat PLA on both the A31 and the A5. Okay, I think the teachers are gonna have to leave. So we've already got the filament loaded on the A31. If you can just give them instruction on the A31 only, for the rest of the time, however long that's going to be, 5, 10, 20 minutes or whatever, but that's what we need. Okay. Well, I'd like to check both of them to make sure that both the printers are printing correctly. Is that okay? If we hit print on both of them? That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, because we're just going to print the print that's like a test print that's already saved on there. So, okay, great. And then I'll, save the, I'll sh uh, share this video with you all um, when we're done. That'd be super. Thank you. You bet. Good luck in your conferences. All right, so go ahead and hit preheat on uh, on the, the A5. Is that the one that's loaded or is the A31 loaded? A31, A31 is, loaded. is loaded. Okay, so we'll preheat then on the A5 and get that one ready to go. And if the A31 is already loaded, then go ahead and tap the button. And then if the, is the SD card loaded in it? Yes. Then go ahead, awesome. Then click print from SD. And then if you scroll down to where it says uh, – on yours, it should say, uh, this one doesn't have it, but it says test prints. And when you tap test prints, then you'll be able to choose the print that you want. So in the case of this, I can go ahead and I'll just click on, uh, on this file right here, this 5-2 Lisa Juice, which is a big parametric equation. And then it's gonna heat the bed up, it's gonna zero itself out, and then it's gonna start printing. 
So this robot is just going to print. We don't have to worry about it. But on the, uh, the A5, we're going to have to load the filament first. So do you guys have the uh, spool holder built that the filament feeds into? No. no okay. So we can go ahead and put that together. So it looks like this. Yeah. Oh, that's what that's <laughs> So this is what's going to hold the filament. So go ahead and move this kind of to the end. That's right about there. I can move this nut almost to the end, but not completely off. And then this will fit in there like that. So it's kind of tricky, but it'll fit in there. Like if you bring it in at an angle like this, okay. it'll, it'll fit in place. And then you'll use the Allen wrench that's found inside of the tool bag. So this is the tool bag right here. And you'll find this, the second smallest Allen wrench will be the one that you can tighten the sides of this with. You don't go too tight because it'll crack. So just tight enough to where it's nice and snug. And then we'll do that on both sides. So kind of move it to the end and then fit it in here like that. And then we'll tighten it. Y'all got it? The nuts want to slip in the slot here, not tighten. Yeah, it's kind of tricky to fit it in there and then to be able to, to tighten it up. So, yeah, the trick is to not have the nuts go all the way off of the bolt. Well, it's just wanting to turn here in the slot. You can even hold it if you want to hold your fingers right here to hold on to it, then that'll hold it because it doesn't have to be too tight. Oh. Yeah, it just needs to be tight enough to where it doesn't uh, it doesn't move at all. So it doesn't have to be all the way tightened. <laughs> Bless you. Y'all get it? Almost. We're close. Okay. I don't understand why this camera is not working. It all it only works when we're about the email. I'll set a space setting for this one. Just keep on. Yeah, that's what I was gonna start doing. I don't want to work on this. I don't want to work on this. Okay. Oh, works really well. Okay. I think this laptop's old. That's this one. Sucker here does not want to work on this. How's it coming? This one does not want to tighten up, of course. Come here. Like that. We're working on this camera. <laughs> Have you tried to unplug it and plug it back in? It's like through the laptop. Oh, okay. It's like the laptop camera? Awesome. So the filament will sit on there just like an axle, and that's how it'll freely be able to spin and unroll into the printer. But what you want to make sure you do is when you're not using the filament, always pull it through these holes in the side so it doesn't come untangled. Because if the filament gets tangled, then it's not going to be able to feed into the printer, and that can also cause a clog. So you always want to make sure that it's pulled through these when you're not using it. So go ahead and unwrap one of these rolls of filament and then put it through this hole in the side. Oh. <laughs> no 
We got it. You got it? Okay, awesome. So then now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug the printer in. And then we'll tap preheat PLA. So we'll go to setup and then preheat PLA again. And then while that's heating, we're going to go ahead and load the filament in. But to do that, we want to make sure that we first pull it out of this hole right here. And then also we want to snip this end to cut off any melted or bent parts of the filament. So you'll look inside of your toolkit, you'll find your pliers, and then these little snippers right here, you can cut the end of this into a point, and that will make it easier to load. So it'll look like this. You got it? You got it? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So then now what we're going to do is you're going to have the filament feeding into this right here. This is the lever, the feeder lever that you're going to depress to push the filament in. So it's going to go in this hole right here and then all the way through this white tube until it won't go anymore. So you squeeze this lever and then push it through that hole right there in the end. And then you might have to wiggle it a little bit to, get to go through the second one and then all the way through the tube, all the way through until it, until it gets to the end. You can kind of see it going through that white tube right there all the way through until it won't go anymore. You're good. Did you guys get it? Yep. Okay, awesome. So then we can also, if we just leveled it, we want to lift this up a little bit so we can make sure that the filament is feeding all the way through. So to do that, we can tap the button. So go ahead and tap it. And then go to controls. And then go to move axis. You guys find it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then move one millimeter. And then we're going to go to extruder and tap extruder. And that will feed the filament itself out. So if you spin this to like 16 or 20 or something like that, it'll flow filament out of the extruder. But if it's too close to the build surface, it won't be able to come out. So if we tap this button, that'll go back one. And we can click move Z. And then we can actually spin Z to lift the Z axis up. So then the z-axis will move up, so then you can actually see if the filament's coming out of the end of the nozzle or not. So mine was pretty close to the build surface, so we can see it kind of right there. But now if I tap this button and then move back to extruder and spin this, now we can see that the filament is going to come out at the end right there. Yeah, it's and the out. only part that gets hot is that nozzle. This part doesn't get hot at all, only the nozzle itself. Are you good, Dustin? And then if you've got filament on the bill plate or something like that, you can reach in and scrape it off and just pop it right off. Or you can take this whole plate off by using these clips and you can bend it a little bit to get underneath it. So you can actually bend it and warp it a little to be able to get underneath the different things that you're snipping. So that, that helps to remove larger prints and stuff like that by being able to bend it, you can pop stuff off. And you can also set this on the table too to be able to scrape and stuff like that. So then by setting it on the table, it'll allow you to get a lot more leverage. And these are made to get really nicked up. So it's okay that there are holes and stuff in them because these are designed to last a lot longer than tape and they're made to get kind of damaged. You just want to make sure that you can scrape them flat so it has a pretty flat surface. And then you can wipe them down with a little bit of like 90% alcohol or like a machine grade acetone, just a little bit to wipe it down there and clean off the build surface if it gets really dirty. But you can, you can clean it with alcohol too. So did that work? Did you guys see the filament coming out of the nozzle? Yeah, we got some on the build plate. <laughs> Can you say that one more time? Yeah, we got, we got the filaments come out. You did? Okay, awesome. So then now we're ready to print. So if our SD card's in there, we'll go ahead and tap the button. And then you can go to print from SD. And then you can cl uh, click test prints and actually print whatever model that you want. So when you click on test prints, you can choose the test print that you want to print and then print it. Or you would select the other model that you saved to the SD card drive. So how's the A31 looking? Does it look like it's sticking? We haven't done anything on the A31 yet. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do the same thing on the A31 then. We, since the filament's already loaded, go ahead and tap the button and then hit print from SD and then go to test prints and select one. And then the printer will heat up and then start printing.
So if it's already heated, it's gonna start printing right away. And then you wanna watch the first couple layers because that's when you'll know if it's printing is those first couple layers. If those first couple layers are sticking, then that means that your nozzle is close enough to the build surface. So you wanna make sure that those layers, those first couple layers are sticking all the way around. And if you can pull this stuff out of the way if you want, but those first couple layers are crucial. And if the first couple layers are sticking, then that means the build itself is probably gonna finish. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that it will. You just always wanna watch those first couple layers to make sure that it's working. And if it's not working right, then just unplug it. And then you can check out what's going on with it and why it's not working right. But this one looks good. Because you'll see the first couple layers are gonna to start to stick and then it's gonna stack layer by layer by layer by layer to build the three dimensional model. So have you guys selected a print on, uh, on each one of them? Uh, just the A31. We don't okay. have an SD card for the A5 that went off too. Oh, okay. They might be in the computer still. The teacher thinks some Up. Okay. Is it still on the computer? Um, we don't know where it went off to. No, she didn't know where it was. Yeah, she didn't know where it was. It, it should be in a little USB drive. Yeah. I, I think she put it somewhere and then... Do you have the other one that's in like a white case and it's in with this? I got the pink one. The pink oh yeah, case. we do have like some, like it looks like it's brand new package. Yeah. You can open that and then you can, you can save, you can slice a file and put it on there. So like, do you guys have Cura still open for the A5? Yeah. Do what? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah so go ahead and, and take that one, open that package then, and then put the SD card in the SD card adapter. And then, uh, and, and use their G-code file that you saved from Cura. Yeah. It'll be a good test to see if you guys can print. Do you guys have like the robot that's still visible on Kira? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, awesome. So go ahead and adjust the robot to where it's gonna print in about 20 minutes. You guys remember how to do that? Change the, uh, change the print speed. Yeah. What? I think it's 20, I'm guessing is at the time. Yeah, you want to move it down to like about 20 minutes. So you can go ahead and like, I'll delete this other one so we only have one thing. And then if you have your print speed at 50, and then you can actually click on your model and scale it to make it smaller or larger. So I can actually move this down and make it a little smaller to, to where it's only going to take like 20 minutes or so. Okay. And then that's what we'll save to our SD card. No, you got it, Josh. So that's that third step where we take our SD card and then save it. So then when I put my SD card in here, you can click save toolpath or just click on the SD and then I can click right here and then click save and it'll save it. And I can even replace it because it's already on there. That's totally fine. And then when you eject it, you'll put that SD card in the A5 and we'll be able to print from it. And then while we're waiting though, make sure that you unplug the A5 because we don't want it to sit heated. So make sure you unplug it while we're getting this all together. I think they got it. They're plugging in the SD card. Okay. Is the A5 unplugged? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Someone put that SD card in the front of our printer. Because it's printing, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, you put it in the, did you put it in there? Yep, it's in the A5 and it's heating. Okay, awesome. What about the A31? Is it still heating? Oh, no. It's printing. Yeah? Awesome. Are the first couple layers sticking? Yes. Yeah? Good job, guys. 
That's awesome. So yeah, if you see those first couple layers sticking, that's what's important. You want to make sure that the filament's coming out at like a 90 degree angle from the nozzle. And if it's moving around and you don't quite see the same, you can do what's called a hot level. Like as it's moving around and as the printer's moving, you can actually adjust these by like a tiny bit, but just be careful to not get caught anywhere. And you can move this by a tiny bit as it's going around until you see the layer height to be the layer that you want. So that's how you can kind of move it around. And you also want to make sure that these clips are on each one of the corners. But this one right here, make sure that this clip is more like in the middle because this corner is the home point. Does that make sense? Yeah, we got that. Okay. So this clip will be right here and then this one here and then the two clips in the back. So you guys got it? Yes. Okay, great. So let me just wait for that A5 and see how it goes. You guys' camera went out, huh? Oh. Yeah. Darn it. Yeah, that's that way. Well, as long as you guys can hear me, then that's good. Can you guys see me okay? Yeah, we can see yep. you Okay, great. Yeah. It's just, I think this laptop's holding the camera. Is it starting? Yeah, yeah, it's starting. Yeah, okay, awesome. So it's, what it's going to do is it's going to print a line around the outside edge first, and that's called a skirt. So that'll build up pressure inside of the nozzle to make sure that it's all printing right. And also it'll show you if the bill plate's level. Because if that skirt isn't sticking, that means what? It's too low. It's, it's not hard enough. It's not too low, but it's too high. Yeah, it's too high. It's like up here. And if it's sticking in there like that and nothing's coming out, then what does that mean? It's too low. Temperature is too low. Yeah. So you want to make it so it's high enough to where the filament comes out at like 90 degrees as it's going all the way around. Yeah. Makes sense. How's it look? I think they're they're doing well. They're both working. Yeah. That's awesome. Good job, guys. So, do you have any more questions for me? Um, I don't think so. Anybody questions? My question is, who did all the brownies? I don't. <laughs> you gotta 3D print some more now, I guess. <laughs> so I'm gonna send this video to Miss Jacob, so she'll have it to show you guys, and I'm also gonna send some links. And if you need any help at all, we're here to help. So any problem that you guys are having, contact us. And you can do that by going to our support and filling out a support request. And we get back to you as fast as we can, usually within the same day, if not at least uh, at the very most 24 hours. So we help uh, to make sure every step of the way, uh, we've got you back with 3D printing. Yeah, that's great, thank you. You bet. Yeah, so you guys have a good rest of the day. And thanks a lot for printing with us. Thank you, thank you. See ya. Thanks,